What is going on guys? It is Aldo here at Zero to Mastery and today I'm handing it over to our ZTM lead instructor Andre Negoy to talk about data structures and all they entail. This particular video was pulled from Andre's full Master the Coding Interview Bootcamp course. If you didn't know, data structures are an essential part of software development. They're not just important for technical interviews, but they also help us ensure that we write fast and scalable code. So Andre is going to tell you all about them. Andre is a senior developer with numerous years of experience and also the founder of Zero to Mastery. But enough talking from me, let me hand it over to Andre to get you guys started. What is a data structure? A data structure is a collection of values. The values can have relationships among them and they can have functions applied to them. Each one is different in what it can do and what it is best used for. Most important thing to take away is that each data structure is good and is specialized for its own thing. Hmm. All right, Andre, you just said a bunch of words and I don't really understand. Well, let's show you a couple of images to simplify this. You see, you can think of data structures as any sort of compartment or container. A data structure is simply a file cabinet of different types. You have a backpack, a place where you put maybe your school books. You have drawers where you put your clothes, a fridge where you put your food, a folder for your files, and a packing box maybe for your toys. Each one of these containers are useful for its own thing. For example, I'm not going to put my food in a drawer over here because that yogurt is going to go bad here. Likewise, I'm not going to put all my papers and files in my backpack or perhaps a toy box because it's just going to get crumpled up. Each one of these containers are specific for its own thing. And that's what data structure really is. It's a way for us to organize data so that we can go into the backpack and retrieve that data really easily. We can go into the fridge and grab that popsicle or ice cream really fast. We can put things in data structures and we can take things from data structures. And that's all it really is. And there are a ton of data structures, just like in our real life, how we have all these containers, hold these places to put things in. In programming, we have a ton of them. If we go to Wikipedia, for example, well, if we scroll through here, we see a ton of data structures. And this is going to look overwhelming, but don't worry. Most of these, well, I've never encountered myself, and they're very, very specific. You probably only have about five or six data structures that are really, really important that we're going to go over. And you may have even heard of Bitcoin and how it uses blockchain technology, this magical word. Well, blockchain, at the end of the day, is simply a data structure, a way to hold information. So in our programming world, data structures, we can store things like numbers, strings, Boolean types, just like we saw when we coded in JavaScript with arrays and objects. Arrays and objects in JavaScript are each a form of a data structure that allows us to store information. You see, as humans, this is what we do on Earth, right? We take the chaos and the disorder and make order out of it. At least we try to. We organize our farms to produce food. We package the food and we deliver them to the grocery stores and organize them in the grocery store so that humans can grab those and can then purchase these groceries and give money to put in a compartment and a bank. That's what programs are. We're modeling real life scenarios. And the more advanced a developer you become, the more time you'll start thinking and spending time talking about data structures. This is why interviewers love to talk about data structures. Now, as I always like to mention, there are always trade-offs. Every programming question has a trade-off. Remember our three 
pillars of readability, memory, and speed when we talked about what code is best? Well, we have the same thing with data structures. One is better than the other in some aspects and the other better than the other. That's why they exist, each one for its own specific case. And there are two parts to understanding data structures. One is how to actually build one. How can we build with code some of these data structures? And two is how to use them, how to use these data structures. We're going to do both of these in this course. But the second point is the most important, right? Because data structures are usually just tools. And most of the time, they're already pre-built for us. The most important part is how to use them, when to use one over the other. And we kind of saw a little bit of that in the previous section when we talked about how to solve problems, where we used an object versus an array to make our code more efficient. The goal in this course is to understand data structures so that you can pick the right data structure for your problem. Based on different scenarios, data needs to be stored in a specific format. We have a handful of data structures that cover our need to store data in different formats. Aldo here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you found this video helpful, you will absolutely love Andre's full Master the Coding Interview Bootcamp course. He dives into everything you need to know regarding data structures and algorithms and truly gets you ready to ace any technical interview that comes your way. More information on that in the description below. But that's it for today and until next time.